Ah, what a good day we've had. You know, a lot of distraction today. I told you there's kind of a mental fog going on. You might even feel it for the next day or so. Uh, just because uh, we're, we're getting, we're going beyond that whole thing of harming yourself. There's still kind of a human fear. If I get a lot of energy, I mean a lot of energy, when it comes into my life, will I harm myself or others? We did a reset today while all the other antics were going on. No, you're not going. You're not going to. You're not going to. And while I was chatting away and doing my theatrics, you actually kind of put in a little switch within yourself that would actually even prevent you from doing that. Kind of a guarantee that you're never going to use energy to harm yourself or others. Why? Well, because you're a master. You've got the maturity now. Yeah, you still have a lot of the old bleed-through remembrances of things you've done in the past, but that was in the past. Let's take a deep breath. The master sat in the cafe. It was his office. He'd been there for about two and a half hours, working hard, working hard, uh, sipping his cappuccino, eating three croissants today, observing people. He decided that on this day he really hadn't wanted to talk to anybody. Some days, you know, he would. And some days people would just come up to him. But this day he really didn't want to talk to anybody. A master becomes so used to being their own best company, actually playing, communicating with, acting out with their own facets. And he had enjoyed that on this day, and he was warm and inviting to the young man that served the coffee and gave him a large tip. But the tip was actually bigger than the bill. But after a couple hours, he knew it was time to go. Put in a hard day sitting there at the cafe, shining his light. He got up and walked outside. It was a one of those really beautiful fall days. You know, the autumn, so so beautiful. The air was still relatively warm, but you know what it's like on those autumn days where you could just feel kind of winter in the air. Kind of a little a little whisper of winter floating around in the warm autumn air. He stepped outside of the cafe and took a deep breath and really had no plans for the rest of the day. But that's kind of the way of the master. No plans. Kind of being in the moment. He took a few short steps over to the street corner. And he stopped for a moment. And he stopped everything in time, in that moment. A master can do that because it's all their energy. In this case, our master just stopped everything like suspended animation. Everything just stopped. And he looked around. And he, he stopped it intentionally because he really wanted to observe. It's something that you're going to find you can do. You want to do. You just observe. And there's no fear of Boy, some of you fear of being judgmental. No, observing is just being aware. Of being, I mean, awareness. That's that's the soul itself. The master was aware of everything. Now, in kind of just suspended animation, time stopped, and he observed. He saw almost right in front of him that there was a distracted driver, somebody that was um, sexting. <laughs> just to make the story interesting, on their phone while they were <laughs> driving, forgot or didn't see that the light had turned red and another car or two had stopped in front of them. And observing, the master could see almost imminent crash. Probably wouldn't cause too much physical damage, but probably was going to lead to at least one car being totaled and a few other cars having significant damages. and. On top of that, when he felt into the energy of the 
sexter, offender. That person didn't even have insurance. Oh boy, was their life going to be tough. Hmm. You know, the master didn't try to change it, just observed it. Imminent crash. Master looked down the street. Not too far away was a new mother uh, with her first child, pushing the child in a stroller. The mother had a kind of a look of worry and concern, but also mixed in with happiness and joy of being a mother. But the mother was so worried about, can I be a good mother? And will I do the same things here to my daughter that my mother did to me? And that energy was so clear, the master could see it. And then in the buggy, the little baby, crying and crying and crying and crying. <laughs> that little baby crying, six months old, because she really didn't want to be here. <laughs> the mother thought it was colic or, I don't know, gas or whatever. But the baby was crying because it didn't want to be here. It happens so often. People, kind of reincarnation is kind of spontaneous, not often even a conscious choice. It just happens. The little baby was crying because it knew it had another 60, 80, 100 years ahead of it on this planet. I'd be crying too. <laughs> the master looked in the other direction and saw a bicyclist with a flat tire. You know, there's not too many things in this world that really show more anger than a bicyclist with a flat tire. I mean, this bicyclist was angry, middle-aged man, all dressed in spandex. <laughs> and this, this man was really angry because he got a flat tire, and of course he was blaming it on everybody else. Somebody must have thrown nails in the road, or broken glass, or whatever happened to be really angry. Angrier than uh, not just the flat tire and the fact that he didn't have an easy way to fix it, but he was angry because he looked really stupid, or at least so he thought. Here I am, Mr. Uh, bicyclist, Mr. Cool, in my spandex, and, and here I am with a flat tire. And he just knew that people in their gas guzzling cars were driving by snickering at him. Whether they were or not didn't really matter, but that's what he thought. So he was really, really angry with this whole thing. Master looked in another direction and heard and saw an elderly woman, elderly meaning she was probably 90. But, but actually was very youthful looking, playing the violin in the street corner. Playing the violin with a little, in her little violin case out in front of her for donations. She was playing some very sweet songs. And you know, normally, the master, before the master, had become a master when he was still an initiate, the master would have felt really bad, like, oh, this old lady playing on the street corner for a few coins for her existence, for her sustenance. How sad is that? But no, the Master wasn't doing that right now. He was, he was actually feeling into the beautiful music she was playing. And then the Master looked in yet another direction over towards the park and saw two young people madly in love. Oh, it made him smile. They, they couldn't be more than 20 years old, and they were all over each other. I mean, in public. Obviously, deeply in love. That it brought back such great memories for him. And that youthful love, that sexual arousal, the absolute crazy out of your mind in love with somebody else. He could, he could only smile thinking of the whole thing. remembering what that was like. The Master just stood there for a moment in a state of suspended animation. Everything just stopped frozen in place. 
And the master didn't even have to consciously make an effort to shine his light because it's always there. You know, when the master first became a master, he always thought that he had to stop and say, I am a light. I illuminate potentials. He realized, well, that was kind of stupid human thinking. He didn't even need to do that. He didn't have to, like, an on and off switch for like illumination. It's always there. All he had to do is remember, I am here. I actually didn't even need to remember that because it was always there. He always realized, I am here. And then he watched. It was magical, beautiful. He watched as this wisdom and this light of the I am, of from Him. Imagine it just kind of slow motion, extending out now, with sparkles, very, very slow, rays of light going out from Him, naturally, easily, into the scene of suspended animation, just kind of like the sun radiating in very slow motion, like the first rays of the morning sun just going out. He didn't have to work at it or push it. It just was happening. You know, you, you've got this thing today, animation, that you know you can literally create these type of things, but this was happening naturally. Sparkles, the rays of lights going out to each and every person in this little scenario. And he let it illuminate them. He didn't try to change them. He didn't try to force a different outcome, simply illuminating their potentials. And then he discontinued the frozen motion, that animate or the suspended state. He discontinued it and everything went back to normal. And he had a big smile on his face. He had a great big smile. You know, it's so effortless. It's with so much compassion not to try to change anything, but just show others what can be, what can come, what the other potentials are. Because you see, humans, they don't really, they're not really that good at seeing potentials. The masters who have come in the past to this planet, they actually just were ones who showed humans there are other potentials. That's what you're going to be doing. Not telling a person how to live their life, not making them change their mind. You know, Yeshua was, well, was part of you actually, but Yeshua showed people there is another way. But back to our story. All the action, all the motion went back to its normal state, and the Master just stood there for a while more. He could kind of, I guess you would say, see into the future, but see the effect that all those, all that light had. His light went over to the man on the bicycle, cussing and swearing and feeling embarrassed and everything. But it was so important for him to be stopped at that moment. Because, you see, if he hadn't gotten that flat tire in the presence of the Master, he'd have been riding down the road uh, about six kilometers ahead when a woman, about 35 years old, on drugs and alcohol, driving a car, would have hit him, would have killed him on the spot. And what may have appeared to be a angry, flat tire incident for this biker, who probably cussed about it the rest of the day and pissed off at people, it was the light of the Master that showed a different way, that caused the flat tire, that caused all the timing to change to save his life. The Master didn't do it. The Master just showed him, in a way, through his light, what his life could become. 
greater life than he could have ever seen on his own. It would have been totally inappropriate for the master to walk over and wave his hands over the tire and have it fixed instantly. That's what some people think magic is. Magic is just being there. And to the young baby in the stroller with the mother, the baby crying. The baby actually was crying so much it didn't want to be here. But what was really happening all that time with that almost hysterical crying, the baby was actually bringing in a tremendous amount of its divinity. And with that breathing, that crying, and you cry, you get out of your head, and when you get out of your head, particularly when you're young, you can let in divine energy. The baby actually wasn't really crying about messing up and having another lifetime. It just wanted more of its spirit, more of its divinity. That's what it was really longing for. And in the light of the Master, the baby realized that, oh, it's not that I don't want to be here. It's I want all of me to be here. That's what the light did, the light of the Master. Lovers in the park, all over each other. They broke up about two months later. Yeah, young people do that. But what happened here is something struck both of them. But neither one of them talked about right away. It struck both of them at that moment in the park. This was not going to be a good relationship. Best to end it now, because there was so much karma, so much past. It wouldn't have been joyful. They would have continued the, the karma. So they found a way to break it off. So they didn't end up in this bad relationship once again. And that in itself cleared the karma, even though they went their own way. The presence of the Master helped them to see, as much as they were thought they were in love in the moment, helped them to see this wasn't going to be good. That's what the light of the Master did. The Master didn't have to walk over to him and tell him that, oh, by the way, you got big time karma coming up if you're together and you're going to have a miserable life and you're going to both detest each other. One of you might kill the other one. The Master didn't have to say that. It was simply the light. And then there was the car accident, well, almost car accident, texting and driving and going to smash into each other. It just, it, it would have caused so much pain in that person's life at that moment if the accident had taken place. It would have caused pain in the life of the people in the car ahead of it. There were some elderly people. An impact uh, that degree would have caused them serious injury, and there was a car in front of that with a few people in it, a few kids that would cause some physical damage and maybe emotional damage. And in that moment, in the light of the Master, when everything was in a state of suspended animation, the person on the phone doing their texting and sexting, and that suddenly became very aware that their irresponsibility was about to change their life and other people's lives. And in that moment, that person, realizing now, all in slow motion, putting their phone aside and seeing this other car coming up quickly, I mean their car coming up quickly on another car, knowing that an accident was about to happen and it was going to be very serious. It didn't happen. They hit the brakes. There was a lot of squealing and skidding. And it just didn't happen. And how it didn't happen had such an impact on the driver why it didn't happen. E even later on, everybody got out of their cars just to make sure everybody was okay. And everybody said, I don't know how you stopped your car in time. It must be because you're driving a, an electric car, whatever. They made excuses, but the fact is that magic happened in that moment. That person in that moment saw a light, a greater potential. There didn't have to be an accident. There didn't have to cause years and years and years and years of suffering. And that person in that moment changed the course of their life. 
became much more responsible. Stopped being so distracted and actually went on to find their passion. All because of the accident that never was. But it caused such a scare with him for that moment that it was life changing. And then finally, the light, this light went out. To the old woman playing on the street corner, playing the violin for donations, for a few coins. The master knew all the way along, even before he suspended time, he knew all the way along that was another master. They didn't like park benches or cafes, so this master chose to play the violin. The master didn't need any money whatsoever. And the master I was young or old, it didn't matter. The, that master, that woman, chose to appear as an elderly, maybe poor woman. So she could sit there and play the violin, and her notes were also her light as she played. People walked by and some tried to ignore her, you know, because it was uncomfortable to see an old lady having to play a violin for money. Other people got it, the magic of her music. The master knew all the way along this was yet another master. I gave him a big smile because she was out there working, doing her stuff, shining her light to the world. Maybe it was her light, he thought, that changed the very nature of every one of these incidents. Maybe it was both of our light. It doesn't matter. Because all that matters is they saw something different. They saw a greater potential, and then it was up to them. The master gave the other master across the street, the woman playing the violin, where she was smiling. He was really smiling at the master. She knew him. She knew who he was. He gave him a big smile. He gave her a masterly nod back. They both put in a long day, shining their light, opening up potentials to others. That's going to be the work you're doing. That's it. You want to know what comes? You want to know what you're going to be doing? That's it. That's a typical day in the life of a master. That's it. You go home at the end of the day, not having had to work for energy or to suffer, or not worrying about harming yourself or any of those others you laugh about those days. You go home. Now it's all within yourself. You, you're back with you. You go home at the end of the day knowing that you're making more of a change on this planet than anyone could possibly imagine. Let's take a deep breath. That's it, dear friends, that's it. I don't know if they're ever going to write books about you or even know your name, but actually the Master doesn't really care, actually doesn't really want that. Oh, acknowledgement, you ask, is, is there any acknowledgement? Sure, well, first with yourself. And then with other masters, you're going to encounter them, whether they came by way of Shambhur or some other way. You're going to know that that's a master sitting over there playing the violin. They're doing the same thing. They're just they're just staked out around the world, whether it's a coffee shop or a street corner or well, maybe a busy airport or anything. You're just going to know. Here. I acknowledge you. You acknowledge me. We're doing what we came here for. The acknowledgement is also from the Ascended Masters. When you come to the Ascended Masters Club, they will have known what you've done more than anybody. They're going to be a bit envious because, well, they didn't do it. They didn't stay in the body for the most part. They left. They're going to be a bit envious. I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to deal with Ascended Masters. They're going to be so filled with joy for what you've done, they will know. Even if not another human on the planet knows what you've done for this place, they will know. 
Let's take a deep breath. The life of a master. It's not trying to change the world. Woe to those who do. It's not trying to inflict your values, your beliefs, or anything on the world. But simply being a candle in a place of darkness, that's it. The candle doesn't try to change a thing. The candle is just there. The candle doesn't curse the dark. Nor does the candle try to become brighter. The candle doesn't try to heat the room. It doesn't try to save the darkness. None of that. It is just a candle. And within each and every one of you, that candle is burning right now. And it has been for a long, long, long time. You just forgot about it. Let's take a deep breath now. Candle is a metaphor, of course, but it is so valid right now. Take a deep breath. Under that candle of wisdom, that illuminates potentials and will never bring harm. Let's take a deep breath for your journey that's brought you here and what comes next in your lives. I really don't want to leave I, I, this gathering. I'm, I just don't want to leave this energy. But, you know, I've got a presentation tonight at the Ascended Masters Club. I, I think they're giving me an award for something. I, I don't know. I don't even know where I put it. I got so much awards. But I, they, they asked me to come by tonight and talk to them about Chambram. My warm-up act, of course, is Kathumi. That's a tough one to follow. I mean, that's a tough one, but I guess i got to get ready. I, I'm going to wear the same outfit that Kaldra wore. Um, I, I like it. I think that will impress the Ascended Masters. But before I go, let's just take a deep breath together. Enlightenment is a given. That's not the reason why you're here on the planet. You're here to be a candle, to shine your wisdom and your light. That's it. 